And there's one more thing that I've been wondering, and that's uh, I noticed that Holland America now has like three bigger ships. Is that on the radar for the future, or? So every year we look at um, at the ship options for us, and obviously we're quite partial to Holland America. They just get chartered so well, and we see it in things they do, like the passengers that were on their other ship, and it was the ship that offered to do this grand procession. Um, it comes down to uh, what we think demand is for the event going up in ship scale. It's greater risk. Um, and what will work for the event? Paul was talking about venues and this, if you want to call it an experiment with programming, because that's just, we were looking what are the range of ships, and part of that was for growth, and part was if this type of ship is all we have as an option for the West Coast, we would have to adapt to program. Yeah, one of the things that the, the industry seems to be moving toward with the newer hardware, as they say, is more smaller spaces, which is harder for us to program the same way that we program this. Yeah, just as one example, the next highest level of ship in the uh, All American fleet, it fits several hundred more passengers, but the main theater fits 200 fewer people. Which means that you couldn't do a two show night. Yeah, you couldn't even fit everyone in a three show night, the way the math works out, if everyone wanted to attend. Which would, for example, if we were to move to that size ship, we would have to restructure how our event runs, be more festival like. Uh, which is not to say that can't be done, but that is a fundamental shift in people's expectations of, of how these events happen. And there's plenty of charters that operate that way. It's not like it's impossible, but it would be a, it would be a hefty haul that we, we'd have to really be confident in making a change like that. We have to have red team one, red team two, gold team one, gold team two. Yeah. Well, and we were in port with the new Staten Man, which is one of those larger connected class ships um, yesterday. And uh, one of the things that I think you may have seen is the difference between the two ships, or a difference that we know is that this is the most chartered ship in the Hall of America fleet, and it has the like charter ringers um, on board serving it. And the New Statman is a great ship, but uh, I don't know that there's any team on any of the rest of this fleet that would have organized that uh, gigantic uh, Lord of the Rings thousand extras situation we had like, <laughs> down on the dock yesterday. Yeah. Um, the team on board here is it's such a pleasure to work with, and they it, it is difficult to overstate how much the, the onboard team makes your go through so special. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they really, they really <laughs> get it. They get it. Yeah. That's it all that goes into our decision making when we talked about you know, could we move to another cruise line if we need to not sail out of Florida anymore. And not that it's the only reason, but we love working with Hall of America. They understand us. They have gone to bat for us numerous times, including putting this ship on the West Coast in 2026. Uh, that wasn't just a thing that happened. That was a thing that happened in dialogue with us. Not that we made it happen, but they they have done, done numerous things along the years for us like that, and we appreciate and value that relationship with them. So they really are partners along with Worldwide Crews. So a hand for them too. Okay. So we all the and, yeah, where where it gets in the future, we don't know. But our our current thinking on scale um, is that we think that in order to keep the kind of classic cruising model of like show dinner show dinner. Um, and to keep the feel of Joe Cruise, we'd really rather go to two cruises per year than to try to bump up the ship size. And that's a big stretch, also. So. Wait, it's a man that allows. Yeah. It's twice as big. Yes. <laughs>